Hi there. Well, hi there. Welcome to the channel. I'm Russ. This is sailing vessel Tautog. Current location is the Bahamas in the Berry Islands at Great Harbor Key. And got here yesterday, correction, this morning, about 12 hours ago. And uh, let's take a look at the trip. So the overview is departure from West End and sailing 24.5 hours to get here. And uh, had some ups and some downs. Had an up, then a big long down, and then a couple more ups. And so it was a pretty good trip overall. Um, and it's just gorgeous here. I mean, the water has got that famous uh, turquoise color that the Bahamas is famous for. I'm sitting here in about uh, eight feet of water, about two and a half meters. So, liking it so far. Not sure what's next. Uh, we're continuing to work our way south. So, if there's uh, the wind I need tomorrow, I'll probably pick up the anchor and move and take a jump because we're going to get becalmed a lot the next couple of days. So, I don't want to motor if I don't have to. So. So, let's take a look at the trip from West End to Great Harbor Key. So, that's West End over there. Just left that about an hour ago. Making pretty good time, about four knots. And the cool thing is, in the west, I've got a setting moon, a full moon going down behind me. I'm sorry, in front of me. I'm supposed to be going this way. There's a um, sun coming up. Hopefully the full thing. Full moon, full sun, baby. December 9, Friday, entering Great Harbor. Entering Great Harbor. And this is what it looks like when you're doing this kind of thing in the wee hours. I mean, it's obviously almost dawn, but, and that's very helpful to have it backlit. But you're trying to, you know, see where the cut is, which I think is over there, that goes into the harbor. You're trying to see channel markers. You're trying to figure out what those two white lights are that look like a car's headlights. Because that looked like it was in the foreground, and it was freaking me out. But I don't see any channel markers of any sort. I don't want to run them over. Okay, a half a mile, we're done. Okay, so that's Great Stirrup K, Key, where the cruise ship is back there. Great Stirrup Key and Little Stirrup Key are wholly owned by the Norwegian Cruise Line Company. So they're privately owned. I mean, you can navigate very close to them, but you can't go ashore. And what I'm looking at here is, is Great Harbor Key. Why is it a Great Harbor? Let's go take a look. Beautiful water. About eight feet deep. Nine or ten, maybe. It was seven feet below my transducer, which is two feet down. So we'll call that nine. That's on the lower end tide. I'll jump in the water probably tomorrow. You get to dinghy shore, see where this guy's going. So we're going from West End to the Berry Islands. And at a high level, let's take a look at this chart. So this is the USA Florida coastline. There's Palm Beach and Miami ought to be down here somewhere. And over here in the Bahamas, it's not that far away. Um, you got Grand Bahama Island. Up here you have the and the Abacos, and this is called I think Great Abaco K. And down here you have Bimini. The Berry Islands are here, and south off the chart is the is Nassau, you know, the New Providence Island, and um, and of course the uh, the Exumas are below that, and Eleuthera. So, so in general, what a lot of people don't know is that there are two major channels in the in the Bahamas. There's the Northwest Providence Channel, which is deep water stuff. This is 1,200 meters deep. And over here, this is the Northeast Providence Channel. That's a direct open shot to the Atlantic Ocean. And that's fine. And down below that is New Providence Island, which is where the city of Nassau is. And that's, in fact, where I'm going next. But yesterday's goal was to get from West End down into the Berry Islands. I had an option to stop at Great Harbor Key, which is where I'm at. Or if I could not get those winds, I was going to continue south to a place called Chub Key, if I had northerly winds, I was going to go this way and wrap around like this pencil line shows down here to Devil's Key. 
but I'm on this side and I wanted to be here silly enough because there's there's cell signal and that's what I use to update my weather information and plan my next move because things change a lot so so trip overview oh my gosh well my friend Steve and my friend Victoria both captains of their own ships up here in West End they helped me get underway at 5 o'clock so a special shout out to them and I left the harbor at West End right around 5 30 6 o'clock and, um, and then I and I was sailing almost immediately I only ran the engine for about 10 15 minutes to get out and had the sails up and had good sailing with northeast winds um, until I got to about here and when I started rounding this cape and we'll talk about that in a minute um, the winds were just not good for maintaining this heading. I, I couldn't maintain it. I could not steer it. The, the sails were going into irons trying to maintain that heading, which was a bummer. <laughs> so I ended up sailing what I could sail, and it was very slow going between, you know, this is six hours, and that's not very good time. You know, I, I wasn't doing very well, and it seemed to be agonizingly painful. Then later the wind kind of clocked around to the east and a little bit out of the northeast, further to the northeast I should say and I was able to get kind of get back on my base course and then I tried to cheat it closer during the wee hours and I was able to sail this almost all of it and motored the last hour or so to get into the harbor. In general it was a good trip and it's uh, one of those things you, you have to go through and I learned again I learned even more stuff and I'm kind of tired of learning things I wish I could just act with complete competence from the get-go and not have any mistakes um, but I guess we're all doing these things for a purpose, and my purpose apparently is to keep learning about myself and about the boat. So, um, so I don't want to focus on the bitching. I mean, I, I tell you, I I might put some at the end of this video just almost for comic relief because it was I was so frustrated, so frustrated. Yeah. But sitting here now, it's it's easy to kind of forget that. But um, but let's talk Anchor about beer. I have foregone the Inca beer in favor of comfort food. I've got eggs and sausage here. Ah. What a beautiful day. I'm going to put the dinghy down and go exploring. Um, and I don't even know how long I'm going to stay here. I've got to be in Nassau in 12 days. And for safety margin, I'd probably like to be there in about, you know, eight days or nine days and just anchor out for a few right next to the marina. I think it's only about, um, I mean, it's not far. I'll double check the chart. I, I think it's only, it's less than 40 miles, <clears throat> I believe. I'll double check that before I shove off and kind of make my passage plan. But yesterday... Um, it was just an ugly five hours, and I got so frustrated I actually had a beer while I was underway, which I very, very, very rarely do. I don't drink while I'm sailing. Um, I had a beer, and then it made me sleepy, and I just sacked out. And when I woke up, I was pointed straight south, and, you know, and the wind was coming out of the east, you know. And so it, the wind was wrong. The wind wasn't matching what the forecast had said, so I was frustrated by that. But I, I know enough about the forecast to know those are what you call gradient wind forecasts. So the gradient winds are the winds, by and large, on the open ocean if there was nothing in the way. But in the Bahamas, of course, there's islands all over the place. And so the wind has to bend around islands and things like that. So the wind direction is never going to be exactly what the gradient forecast says. And I was a dumb shit and didn't really think that through because <clears throat> I was counting on northeast winds in order to make the course I wanted to make and when I get out there and wrap around the head it was east and a little bit southeast and I couldn't steer the course I wanted and I was very very frustrated but and then the hydro vane wasn't holding course well so I was just I just had a rough day for a while there it got better in the evening and by late afternoon it had gotten better and the winds had clocked around to the northeast, and I was able to do pretty well. And as the evening wore on through the night, it really got better, better, you know. And so I made pretty good speed and make an average about four and a half knots once I got through that ugly afternoon. And I pulled in at 6.30 in the morning today, which is behind schedule, of course. I expected to be here around 2 a.m., and uh, four hours late. But again, I, I kind of, 
I lost a lot of time sitting there right off the coast of Freeport making about two knots the wrong direction, you know, and just and zigzagging all over because the hydrovane wasn't keeping course, you know, and it just was a very, very frustrating day. <clears throat> I mean, at one point, if, so if you look at a map and you're south of Freeport and the winds are out of the east, maybe a little northeast, maybe a little southeast, there's not too many good sailing solutions. And so I thought, well, am I going to have to just sail south for Bimini? I, I, and, but the shoal there between me and Bimini was pretty ugly, so just getting around the shoal became my, my, my primary focus. I got past the shoal and onto the, the big Grand Bahama Bank, and then I kind of fine-tuned my course and got in here. Um, I had to motor the last little bit because uh, the winds are, you know, mostly north now, but, whew, rough trip, guys, and you don't make career decisions or big decisions when you're having a shitty day, and I had a shitty afternoon, so, <sighs> at one point, I remember thinking, you know, I'm just going to point this thing west and keep going until I hit the beaches in Florida, until I hear sand rubbing the bottom of the boat, and then I'm just going to jump off and say, I'm done. And I do wonder, in fairness and in complete honesty, that whether I have the temperament for this. I mean, I think I'm a pretty laid-back, chilled-out guy, but I guess I'm really not. Because I like to make a sailing plan, and I like to follow it, you know. And I and I, I didn't have a backup plan, so I guess what I need to do going forward is think, well, we assume the winds are going to be like this, but what happens if the winds are from, you know, 45 degrees different? And what would I do then? And kind of have a pre-plan put together... I think that would help me feel a lot better about it instead of just being frustrated like I was yesterday. And it's not a good feeling to be screaming at the hydrovane and just to be cursing the weather and thinking, like, what the hell? You know, like, you're supposed to be from the northeast. Why aren't you from the northeast? But, but let's look at a map. So you can see my location here in Freeport is at the far end of this island. And if you imagine the northeast Providence Channel as a funnel and is directing this northeast winds, which way is the wind going to go? It's going to wrap around and follow the contour of Grand Bahama's south shore. And that's exactly what the wind did. So by the time that wind gets to the Grand or the, uh, the Lucaya slash uh, Freeport area, all those air molecules are going to have fo basically follow the coastline. And that's why I was getting winds out of the east and out of the a little bit southeast. And so I should have anticipated that. That's that's when I'm sitting here, and now that I've, I've got anchored and the winds are pretty quiet, and I'm sure I'm not going to drag, I'm sure I'm going to sleep like a baby today, I'm sure I'm going to put the dinghy down and go into town and see what's here. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a great day, but I I do need to plan better. You know, it's, it's just another thing I've learned, and um, I thought I kind of knew how to do this sort of thing, but... When you're, when the lesson is when you look at weather forecasts and they tell you what the wind is going to be, but you're sailing in and amongst a bunch of islands, the wind is not going to be what it will be on the open sea. So that's something I knew and just I didn't, you know, if it had been a test question, I'd have gotten it right. But it, when I was making my plan, I thought, well, hell, I can make do with northeast winds. I'd be perfect. I didn't, it didn't occur to me when I shoved off that the winds would be, you know, contrary when I got south. And when I got further south, then the winds became out of the northeast, just like they're supposed to have been. So, and it was not a, not a fun early afternoon. I was pretty pissed off. <laughs>
guys, I apologize for not having more underway footage this time. You know, it just did not occur to me to get the camera out, you know. So, but I'm glad to be here, and I'm happy uh, for you guys to ride along, and I uh, will get another video out as soon as I get to Nassau.